Sun Chun Park, Hyun Jung Grant, Sun Cha Kim, Yong Ye, Tan Xiao Jie, Feng Dao Yu, Delena Ashley Yuen, and Paul Andre Michelle. These are the people who were killed in Atlanta two weeks ago. Okay, and we've almost stopped talking about them. So today, I'm going to talk about Asian representation and Asian racism again. I've done a video like that before, so I'm going to talk about that again because I think it's very important. Okay, I know it's going to be heavy stuff, but I'm going to lighten the mood by doing a Raya and the Last Dragon makeup, okay, of Sisu the Dragon while I talk about all this. Okay, so don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for post notifications, and I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so let's just get started. So I'm going to do Sisu. Sisu is basically the dragon, the water dragon in Ryan and Last Dragon. If you're talking about Asian representation and Southeast Asian representation, I think this new Disney movie has a, a lot of improvements over the last one. I did the Mulan one uh, before. So I'm going to be turning myself this pastel purple and blue colour and yes, I made a headpiece. So I'm going to try to recreate these colours on my body, okay? This is Sisu's horns. <laughs> and I'll be using my new Athena palette. This was this is a really colorful cream-based palette that Lawrence Cheney has been using on his channel. So we're gonna try doing that. Okay, first let's prime and I guess I'll just get right into this whole talk about racism again. When the Atlanta shootings happened two weeks ago, basically this young man walked into, drove to two spas and shot up eight people, six of them were Asian. And when he was arrested, he said that this wasn't racially motivated and he had a sex addiction and basically attacked these parlors because he thought they were dens of inequity. And this led to three whole days of people debating whether this was a hate crime. It was so obviously a hate crime that conflates misogyny, racism and xenophobia. But people just couldn't call it a hate crime for so many days, okay? Finally, people did start to speak out, okay? A lot of the podcasts I listen to started talking about it too, but they seem to have dropped off. <laughs> now, now that there was another shooting in Colorado. And anti-Asian violence has been on the rise ever since Donald Trump has been using really, really inflammatory remarks to refer to the coronavirus as the China virus or the Wuhan flu and stuff like that. A lot of it was reported at the beginning of the pandemic and then no reports, okay? Mainly maybe because Asian people tend to under-report violence against them. And a lot of the elderly Chinese people in Chinatowns who are being attacked also probably don't want to draw attention to themselves. Okay, it's very heartbreaking and it's really horrible that, that all these things are coming to light now. I'm pretty sure that was happening the whole time, okay, during the during the lockdown. We're really only hearing about it now. I guess shirt comes off. Okay, so I'm gonna try to go for mostly blues with highlights of purple, lilac, and then I guess I'll do some details with pinks and blacks. I don't know, I haven't decided. <laughs> so I'm gonna be scooping out some of this blue. Looks like a really, really nice sky blue, so shiny. It's a layer of oil on all of these. Some of this purple and a whole bunch of white. Okay, so blue and purple. I'm just gonna fill in the center of my face with some of this alabaster. Just make sure the highlights are. And I think I mentioned before in my other video that when I was in America, you could feel, okay, that there was definitely people who considered you other and there was a lot of xenophobia and everything that I could really feel, okay? and. Being Chinese, or being you know at least a light-skinned Chinese person, I also didn't really dare to speak up. Okay, in America, the, this this whole race issue has been really, really just boiled down to either black or white, and everyone else seems to be along the periphery. Chinese people also have this um, onus of being called the model minority. Okay, here yeah, I'm doing white face while I talk about this. <laughs> The model minority where they're, they're held up as an example of what an uh, immigrant should behave like. Okay, keep it out of trouble, don't protest, know your place. Okay, and I think a lot of Chinese people have bought into this and try not to rock the boat whenever they experience racism themselves. Because, you know, it all has to be between whites and blacks. Okay, and of course, black people have a lot to complain about. The whole history of racism and everything that's really in the forefront the last few years. But it does seem to erase the amount of um, anti-Asian racism that is that has permeated American history and also world history. I'm going in with some of the blues first. I think I did mention this in my Mulan video. The Chinese people were actually brought over to America, okay, in the 1800s to replace freed slaves, okay? They needed a source of cheap labor and, the, and these Chinese immigrants were a good way to replace the emancipated slaves Okay, and they worked on the railroads, 
They worked to build a lot of America. A lot of the railroads were built by Chinese immigrants. Apparently, a lot of them died building the railroads. This is not taught in any of the history textbooks. And of course, when as there were more and more um, Chinese people coming to America, of course, they started to you know have their own businesses and started providing the cheap labor and the cheap goods that they were known for. Okay, and this scared Americans so much that jobs were being stolen that they actually passed a Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882. And this Chinese Exclusion Act actually forbade Chinese people from owning property and from living in certain areas. And they were forced into ghettos like Chinatowns, okay? So Chinatowns were actually ghettoized because of this. And this ethnic cleansing didn't stop there, okay? In 1975, they actually banned Chinese women from emigrating to America, okay? This is basically to cut off family lines and which is also a form of eth ethnic cleansing. And throughout the next few decades, a lot of Chinese were actually forced out of towns, okay, all up and down the West Coast, okay. These were literally ethnic cleansing. They, they, would, they would like raid the shops, raid the factories, pile them up on pickup trucks and send them out of the town and make them march up the railroads, sometimes really into Canada. And this happened all the time, okay. So if you're talking about um, ethnic cleansing and how America is talking about and how the Chinese people are mistreating the Uyghurs, they did like, almost exactly the same thing okay, in the 1800s. And in the early 1900s, this is when America was at war with Japan, they basically had Japanese internment camps, which um, rounded up Japanese people, whether they were affiliated with Japan or not, and put them in concentration camps. So a lot of this deep-seated racism stems from this, stems from this time. This is quite interesting book called Driven Out, which chronicles all this ethnic cleansing in America. The rest, purple. And although they did try to exclude Asian women from America and everything, white men couldn't help but sexualize and fetishize Asian women. And that's what they've been doing this whole time. At the same time, desexualizing Asian men. The Asian men are never seen to be the romantic lead or to, you know, be desirable. That's probably shifted a little bit in the last few years, but probably not as much, okay? Still, even gay men who, gay white men who come after Asian men usually look at it as a fetish or look at it as a type. And this fetishization is dangerous and apparently deadly, okay? People just conflate Asian women with sex workers a lot of the time. I mean, musicals like Miss Saigon doesn't help, okay? That way they depict most of the female Asian cast there are all sex workers, okay? And the white woman, of course, is the pillar of um, marital bliss and virtue. The woman who marries Chris in America. Just blend the purple into the blue. I mean, even once, I, I remember a few years ago, I was talking about drag race to some of my friends. Okay, and we we're talking about kimchi, okay, kimchi, and I said she's an Asian drag queen. And of course, one of my friends had to go, oh, love you long time. Okay, and then I got really, really mad, <laughs> okay, at the time, and I really blew up on him, okay, because for one, uh, kimchi is Korean, so they probably never say this love you long time thing, which is a Chinese or Thai stereotype sex worker. Okay, and another thing, drag queens, just because they're drag queens, they're not sex workers, okay? So I got really mad and I explained all this to him at the time and of course everyone just rolled their eyes at me because I, they thought I was overreacting. But you know, this is the kind of sentiment that is dangerous, okay? That people actually, because of this love you long time thing, okay, assume that most Asian women are sex workers, okay? Or most attractive Asian women are sex workers and available for sex. And if they don't give you sex, then you, then, you know, violently attack them. And this is probably what happened in Atlanta, okay? This gentleman who, no, well, gentleman, this young person who apparently came from a very Christian Dominion background has this internalized sex shaming okay, where he thought that because of his sex addiction, whether he had one or not, led him to shoot up um, Asian massage parlors because he thought places where massages were given was a place of sex. When, you know, in a culture of Asia, people go for massages all the time, okay? In, it's in our culture to go for massages. All my friends go for massages on the weekends, okay? Put reflexology, massages, um, tweena, and, and all these different techniques of um, releasing the meridians and the chi is massage is actually quite integral to Asian culture. And to conflate these places as brothels and areas of sex where it's, it's racist, it's really racist. And not only that, Asian people are all just dumped into one bucket, okay? So everyone who, who's a light-skinned Asian just walks out and is immediately Chinese, okay? Korean, Japanese, Filipino are all just assumed to be Chinese and all assumed to be stealing your jobs or stealing your men. And that's also fucking racist. Use the purple to contour.
And so, as I mentioned, because the discourse for racism in America boils down to either being black or white, a lot of this is not discussed very much at all, okay? And hopefully with recent activism, this will change. In Germany, it's actually illegal to deny the Holocaust, okay? You can't deny the Holocaust and they have to grapple with the atrocities that they had during the world wars. And the Jewish people do um, have a little bit of a parallel to, to Asians as well because these are the minorities at the time who were uh, supposed to have a lot of money and supposed to be very good with money and um, they were also subject to the model minority myth, okay, at the time. So in, in America, unfortunately, these things were never really addressed. They don't teach this in schools. They don't talk about this kind of history of racism. You could probably also go into all other races in America, okay? The Latinos, the Middle Easterns, and show that white supremacy has really brought down all these communities. All right, I'm gonna set all this in my Maroon color set and I'll be right back. All right, I contoured my nose a little bit and I set everything with color set. Now I'm going to go in with my, my kimchi palette, okay? The Asian owned palette. Okay, I'm gonna use this purple called Oasis to contour. Okay, yeah, so back to this case in Atlanta. In Atlanta, this case basically, as I mentioned, conflates, okay, Asian women with sex workers. And this whole sex negativity, puritanical, moral purity panic, okay, is very, very rife in America, okay? And it's dangerous also, okay, because it basically breeds these white men who can't get sex when they want and they become incels, okay? So, and they become uh, resentful for a society that does not um, deem them sex worthy. And they lash out in these really dangerous ways. Of course, all this intersects with things like gender violence, misogyny, and easy access to guns. Apparently, this guy just bought the guns on the same day, okay, without adequate background checks, and walked in these massage parlors and shot these people up. And it's very difficult to claim that he wasn't racially motivated because apparently there was a sex shop and a strip bar nearby which he didn't touch. Okay, and he drove directly to the massage parlors just to do, carry out these attacks. It's really strange, you know, that American culture actually breeds this kind of um, reaction. You don't really see this, see this anywhere else in the world except probably maybe the Middle East, okay, where there's also a lot of... Um, uh, misogyny and oppression of women. I guess America was founded, okay, when the pilgrims went from Britain to America, they were very, very religious, okay, and they did have this sense of mor moral superiority. This actually permeates American society today. I mean, a lot of the missionary work from America and a lot of the Christians in America, they espouse this very evangelical message, okay, and very um, strict gender roles, very heteronormative principles, okay, even the missionary work when they go overseas to teach English, and they all use Bible study, okay, to spread things like that. Okay, I think I'm gonna go for a, quite a big drag eye for this look. Let me use a dark purple. I'm gonna use Alex from the Painters palette to sketch up my eye. Trying a new eye shape today. Bringing this in almost like one step from the corner of my eye. I'm going to use this Player One for my Sugar Pill palette, another Asian-owned uh, makeup company, Sugar Pill. This pastel color to blend that out. Not only, not only that, but you know, there, there's a lot of language where there's, you know, subtle racism against Asian people. I mean, recently I've been listening to some of these um, talks about invasive species, okay? And there's this um, carp that was brought over from China or Asia somewhere. It's called Asian carp. And they are basically, the way that is discussed in the media and even some of my progressive science podcasts, they talk about these Asian carp as, as aggressive and taking over local flora and fauna and everything. Although while that is true, using the word Asian, it's almost, it's really just conflates these xenophobic tendencies, okay? It's, almost, it's literally like saying China virus, Wuhan flu, the Wu flu or whatever. And recently in some of my science podcasts, they've been talking about research integrity, okay, about how there are a lot of paper mills in China, okay, and that every time they see a paper with Chinese names on it, they always look at it with suspicion that this, these are like fake papers. The data has been falsified. You don't have to look very far to, to see that there's a lot more paper mills and a lot of these research from Europe <laughs> and America themselves. The way that they talk about Chinese researchers being unreliable or being spies, it's also very racist. Okay, going back in to deepen. 
Even recently, Minari, the movie about a Korean immigrant family that moves to Arkansas to do farming. It's a totally American movie, but just because it was in Korean, it was listed as a foreign film for the Golden Globes. If it's an immigrant American story, why can't it be American? I'm using Pop from Sample Beauty. I can go over this part, drag it up. And furthermore, in Minari, the acting is so overlooked, okay? I think in America, people are just used to actors being, you know, very expressive and very over the top. And these dramatic roles are usually the ones that get accolades. Okay, whereas in Minari, Han Ye Ri, the actress who plays the wife, okay, has this very, very controlled, restrained performance, okay? And these roles are never ever celebrated, okay? But that's how um, Asian Americans behave, okay? They don't want to um, express their feelings because they, they look at the community as a whole, okay? And this is also why Asian American violence is so underreported, okay? Because most of the time people just keep it in. So, so, of course, I was very happy to see when in San Francisco, this, when this 75-year-old lady, Xiao Zhenjie, attacked or retaliated against her perpetrator and sent him on a stretcher to the hospital. Don't us underestimate little old Chinese ladies. A lot of these um, uh, attacks were actually targeted against elderly Chinese people and that really, really makes me really angry, okay? I get so heartbroken every time I see an old Chinese person come in and they're all alone and everything. And these are the people who, these are the people attacked, okay? Apparently there was this challenge going on, okay? In all these message groups, telling people to go out and slap an Asian person. Only in America. Cut the crease with P. Louise. And speaking about movies, Rai and the Last Dragon, of which Sisu is a character, is great Asian representation, okay? Another thing about representation, Asians are not a monolith, okay? People just tend to think of Asians, mainly we talk about the light-skinned Asians, okay? And that's what happened with um, Crazy Rich Asians, okay? Although that was a movie that I really, really loved, mainly because it was um, represented Singapore, and probably because I felt seen in a movie. There's a lot of erasure of other Asian races, okay? Everyone, of course, assumes that a light-skinned Asian person is Chinese, okay, or Japanese or something. But there's so much more to Asia, okay? There's so much diversity here for the indigenous Southeast Asian people who are darker-skinned, okay? And I think in Ryan and the Last Dragon, it really, really showcases this group of people who have been overlooked so much, okay? You can see from the flat noses, the darker skin, that these, that, that um, Ryan and the Last Dragon really tries to represent these people. Unfortunately, most of, the, most of the voice actors turned out to be East Asian, okay, or light-skinned Asians, such as Sandra Oh, who's Korean, Okafina, who's Chinese, and Gemma Chan, who's, I think, from Hong Kong, okay? Unfortunately, at this stage, it's very hard to insist on certain representations. I think it's already quite a good effort that they tried to get this completely Asian cast, okay? But they could have tried to look further afield for um, darker-skinned and for more indigenous Asians, okay? People from Cambodia, Myanmar, Vietnam, oh, uh, um, Kelly Marie Tran is Vietnamese, but Laos, Indonesia, okay? Raja, Raja the drag queen is Indonesian. Why couldn't she have voiced the character? She's a dark-skinned Indonesian. I'm gonna use the player one, this pastel player, okay? To also to bring this up and contour a bit of a dragon brow. So yeah, but otherwise, I think Raya and the Last Dragon is a gorgeous, gorgeous film. Everyone should watch it. I think it's they got a lot of things right. The food is amazing. You can you can see um, a lot of Southeast Southeast Asian representation there, from the durians to satay to tom yum soup. All these details people might not usually pay much attention to. Even the background, the mangrove swamps. Okay, that's very very. I mean, we see that here all the time. The Architecture is beautiful, okay? Some of the really beautiful backdrops in Fang look like some sort of resort in Bali. Yeah, so I really, really like Ryan Last Dragon. I would very, really recommend it. Okay, but next time, maybe in a sequel, get some so real Southeast Asian actors. I'm gonna use um, the purple and prince to darken up some of the contour. Okay, I'm gonna contour a little bit more, throw on a liner, and we'll be right back. All right, so I've thrown on a liner, okay? And now, now I'm going back in with prince, just to smoke this in into the black. I'm going to use the same dark shade prints, smoke out the lower lash line. Give myself a bit more of a cartoon look. Yeah, so that's really why representation matters. That we really need to start thinking about more specific representation. And giving myself this kind of more of a stripey, stripey appearance that will hopefully resemble a dragon or a fish or something, since Sisu is supposed to be a water dragon. 
Okay, and pop a little bit of the black there. Okay, fun bits. White Super Beauty. I'm gonna give myself a bit of a white brow there. Just looking at the wig I styled. I used one of my, my old purple pastel wig that I used in this photo, and I used Sharpies to give it a whole bunch of different colored highlights, and I'm gonna try to reflect that in my makeup today too. Okay, but first, see this part here? That was basically the base for my white whiskery brow. This looks a bit more like a deer. Almost like a whisker on a dragon. And now I'm going to go in with my pink, Listen Cosmetics pink liner. It almost like scales. I'm just going to add on a few more details, throw on a lip, and I'll be back with the finished look. And this is the finished look, Asian Water Dragon by Disney, Sisu. I added some details here, some scales, some purple and blue hands with nails. All right, so stop Asian hate, don't be racist, sign a couple of petitions to stop Asian hate in America and around the world. All right, I'm going to try to link down a few petitions down below. This is my horns, not very stable. <laughs> and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for post notifications. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.